You're watching the Video Revolution Podcast from Primo Productions. Kevin Robert was born in Starkville, Mississippi. He received his BA degree from the University of Mississippi and a degree in law from Washington and Lee University, Virginia. After practicing law successfully, Kevin turned to his true interests, sales and human relations. Mr. Robert's vast knowledge is drawn from a wide background of experience. He has sold insurance and real estate for over 20 years, held sales schools and conducted courses in sales, human engineering, personal development, and management for many of the nation's outstanding companies. The unique ability of Cavett Robert to add people knowledge to product knowledge has earned him the reputation of a number one speaker in America in the field of motivation. He has devoted his life to helping people bring their do-how up to their know-how, helping people to realize that regardless of what they do, first and foremost, they are in the people business. An ex-lawyer, a great promoter of human potential, a man of many abilities, I give you Cavett Robert. Ho, ho. You know, I'm so glad to see so many beautiful women here. Meetings are so much better when they are enhanced with the pukitude of beautiful women. Now, I don't know whether you know it or not, but out west, in the western part of the United States, more women attend meetings than, than men, and for a very good legal reason. You see, we have a community property law out west, different from the states back east. Whenever a woman out west stands before an altar by a man and says, I do, she automatically starts getting one half of his property. Now, I have found out from practicing law out here the last 40 years, whenever she stands before a judge, and says, I don't, she usually gets the other half. So I don't think it's going to be long before you gals are going to own the West. Maybe that's what O'Hara's really meant when he said, go West, go West, go West. But I belong very much to the philosophy of this dear little fellow I read about the other day up in Winslow, Arizona, who is 76 years old. And he married the seventh time at 76. And someone said, tell me why? Would a man 76 years old want to marry the seventh time? He looked at him and he smiled. He said, my friend, for the little bit they eat, I just wouldn't be without one. <laughs> well, I hope and pray I'm never without one. We men know, don't we? When we're without a lovely woman to love and cherish, brother, we are more without something than we'll ever be. You know, when Dell Webb and Dan Toppin bought the Yank, the ball club, they brought them to Phoenix, Arizona for the first few years of their spring training. And I got to be a great friend of old Casey Stinger. We used to go out and hunt dove a lot. And we have a little group called the Thunderbirds. We sponsor the Phoenix Open Golf Tournament every year. And we gave a little appreciation dinner to old Casey. And he told a very provocative story. He told about the young bonus baby, the young ball player, who had his first great opportunity up at the big league club. And what this kid lacked in experience, he more than made up in enthusiasm. He wanted to get in that game in the worst way. He kept saying, Coach, please send me in, send me in. Coach said, now look, son, be patient. You, you are new. We can't gamble on you. Why, if, you, if we sent you in there and you struck out, why, they would boo you. They'd throw coat bottles. They'd chase you out of the park. Still, he kept begging, begging, begging. Ninth inning, bases loaded, score tight. He got on his knees. He says, oh, Coach, please send me in there. He says, I know I can hit that ball. The coach turned to the sudden and said, you know, this kid believes in himself. You know, maybe he's right and we're wrong. Maybe we better send him in there. So they sent him in there. And sure enough, he struck out. Everybody began booing, booing, throwing Coke bottles. Coach, one of them grabbed him by the collar, lifted him up. He said, son, you let this be a lesson to you. You hear those boos? He looked up and smiled at the coach. He says, coach, they are not booing me. They love me. They are booing you for sending me in. On the <laughs> well, I just want to say, I've never been treated so nice 
Oh, you want to show me the art of gracious living still survive? I've had so much fun. And do me a favor. If you don't like what I say, don't spoil my date. Love me and just boo the people who brought me here, if you will. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's go to the third great principle of human engineering. Human engineering. How many of you read Maxwell Maltz's great book on psycho -cybernetic? Good, good, good. You know, he was such a great guy. In fact, I did 19 seminars with him just before he passed away. And we ended up in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, we gave a big banquet. Mother and I did have the governor and had the mayor, had everybody there. And uh, three days later, he sprained his back, went to the hospital, caught pneumonia, and died. But such a lovely little fellow. But you remember in that book what he said. Something very important. He said what all psychologists agree upon. And this is important to us, particularly anyone who's involved in any kind of selling. He said that our mind is made up of two parts. Our conscious mind is one-tenth. Our subconscious mind is nine-tenths. That's where the 15 billion cells are. He said we learn quickly from our conscious mind, but we forget quickly. But once it seeps in our subconscious, we never forget. Maxwell says it takes 21 days of repetition for it to seep down into your subconscious. Some say 20, well, he said 21, some say 18. I read where one fellow said 41. Max says, if you got your waste paper bags on this side of your desk, you change it over this side, for 21 days you'll still be throwing trash on the floor over here. Now, this is the most important thing I'm going to say to you today, and that is this. Please listen. You tell from your conscious, but you sell from your subconscious. You give knowledge from your conscious, but you give feeling from your subconscious. You can inform, you can entertain from your conscious, but you only can cause action from your subconscious. Because action comes only from feeling, and feeling comes from your subconscious. Oh, you can give get uh, opinions from here, but only decisions from here. All of your suspects and prospects come from here, but your customers and your followers come from here. Now, I love my salespeople. I do, I do, I do. One named a kid for me the other day. But I want my salespeople to mentally, and emotionally cry themselves to sleep at night because I love them when they don't know exactly from here how to handle I want it, think it over. My friend, in most selling, if you're a pro, you will try to give provocative statements, questions to bring forth that divine statement, I want to think it over. My friend, that's when selling starts, not in. Everything in prologue up to that point. But you will find that whenever we have the slightest fear, stress of any kind, and we have it in cell. Your conscious snaps shut like a mouse trap, but it never affects your subconscious. You don't drown by falling in the water. You drown if you remain there. You don't fail in selling because you get afraid. You fail if you do not know what to do about it. And what should we do about it? You're never any better salesperson than your subconscious. Reflex action, like you're driving a car. Did you ever get almost back to your office? Oh, why didn't I think of that? If you are honest with yourself, you will admit that we all make three presentations. We make the presentation we plan to make. We make the presentation we actually made. Then we make the presentation we wish the devil we'd made when we get back and they've lost that sale. Is there a way to combine them all into one so we always make our best presentation? Well, I'm glad you asked me that question because there is, and that is to learn your presentation in every respect from your subconscious over and over and over, because it does not affect it. Oh, my friend, don't get rid of fear. Oh, no. Fear is the thing that lets those old juices, that old adrenaline going. When I have a new salesperson, I send them out, and they come back and say, I wasn't afraid. I know one of two things. They have some nut, some sex maniac. I don't around my office. Oh, they're lying to me. I tell them I do not want to remove the butterflies from your stomach. I just want to teach them to fly in formation. Oh, no, my friend. I remember I tried to be a professional fighter when I was a kid. I just wasn't good enough. 